Welcome to another Ziva Math video. In this video, we're going to practice dividing decimals by decimals. Let's take a look at our examples. In this example, we have 2 and 36 hundredths divided by 5 tenths. And the first thing we need to look at is our divisor. We have 5 tenths, and you can't have a decimal number in that divisor. It has to be a whole number. So we're going to take the decimal in 5 tenths and we're going to move it one place to the right. So our 5 tenths will now be a whole number. If I move the decimal in the divisor, I also need to move it the same number of places in the dividend. So I moved it one place in the divisor, so I'm going to move my decimal one place to the right in my dividend. From here, I recommend that you rewrite your problem so that you can clearly see that now you have 23 and 6 tenths divided by 5. The next step is to bring that decimal in your dividend straight up so that it's in the correct place in your quotient. Now we're going to divide, and I can't divide 2 by 5, so I'm going to be dividing 23 by 5, and 23 divided by 5 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20, then we're going to subtract 23 minus 20 is 3. So once you take care of your decimals, you're going to be dividing like normal. Your next step is to bring the 6 down. So I have 36 divided by 5, and 36 divided by 5 is 7. 7 times 5 is 35, and 36 minus 35 is 1. I do need to add a 0 behind the 6, so I have the 0 to bring down. So I can do 10 divided by 5, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 minus 10 is 0. So my quotient is 4 and 72 hundredths. In this example, we have 384 thousandths divided by 3 hundredths. And the first thing we need to look at is the divisor. We can't have a decimal number in the divisor, so we need to move the decimal point so we have a whole number. We're going to move that decimal point two places to the right. And if I move my decimal point in the divisor, I also have to move it to the in the dividend. And I'm going to move it the same number of places. So I need to move the decimal point in my dividend two places to the right. From here, I highly recommend that you rewrite your problem so that you can see that what you now have is 38 and 4 tenths divided by 3. And our first step in doing this part of our problem is to take that decimal point and move it straight up so it's in the correct place in our quotient. Now we're ready to divide like normal. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, and I'm going to place the 1 right above the 3 because that's what I just divided. 1 times 3 is 3, and when I subtract, I get 0. Now I need to bring the 8 straight down, and I have 8 divided by 3, and 8 divided by 3 is 2. I'm going to place the 2 right above the 8 because that's the section of the problem that I'm in. 2 times 3 is 6, and when I subtract, I get 2. Now I'm bringing the 4 down, and I have 24 divided by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24, and 24 minus 24 is 0. So my quotient is 12 and 8 tenths. In this example, we have 479 divided by 2 and 5 tenths. And the first thing we have to do is look at our divisor, and we have to turn the 2 and 5 tenths into a whole number. And we do that by moving our decimal point one place to the right. So instead of 2 and 5 tenths, we have the whole number 25. Now, if we move our decimal in our divisor, we also have to move it in the dividend. And right now, I don't see a decimal in my dividend, but we know if it's we have 479, a whole number. The decimal point is at the end. So I have to move my decimal point in my dividend the same number of places that I moved it in the divisor, which means I have to move it to the right one place. And in order to move it to the right one place, I have to add a zero. 
in order to move that decimal point one place to the right. Now my next step is we want to rewrite our problem so that we can see that we have 4,790 divided by 25. And I'm going to start by dividing 47 by 25. 47 divided by 25 is 1. 1 times 25 is 25. Now I'm going to subtract. 7 minus 5 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2, so I get 22. And the next step in our division process is to bring down the 9. So as you can see, once we take care of our decimals, we are dividing like normal. Now I have 229 divided by 25. 229 divided by 25 is 9. 9 times 25 is 225, and I am subtracting. 9 minus 5 is 4, and then I need to bring down that 0. So now I'll have 40 divided by 25, which is 1. 1 times 25 is 25, and when I subtract, I'll need to regroup, and I'll have 10 minus 5 is 5, and 3 minus 2 is 1. So right now I have a remainder of 15, but we're working with decimals, so we're not going to put remainder 15. We're going to add a decimal to our dividend. We're going to bring that decimal point straight up into our quotient, and we're going to add a zero that we can bring down. Now we have 150 divided by 25, and 150 divided by 25 is 6. 6 times 25 is 150, and 150 minus 150 is 0. So our quotient is 191 and 6 tenths. One more thing to make note of in our division problems is how I'm keeping everything lined up in columns. So when I divided 47 by 25, 47 divided by 25 was 1, I put the 1 over the 7 because I divided 47 by 25. When I got to the decimal point, I brought it straight up so that when I did my next division step, I knew that I had the 6 behind the decimal point. That way, all of your digits and your decimal point in your quotient are in the correct places. In this problem, we have 2 and 47 hundredths divided by 12 hundredths. And the first thing I'm going to do is look at my divisor where I have 12 hundredths. My divisor has to be a whole number, so I'm going to take the decimal point and I'm going to be moving it two places to the right. If I move the decimal point in the divisor, I have to move it the same number of places in the dividend. So the decimal point in the dividend also needs to move two places to the right. Now I'm going to rewrite my problem so they can clearly see that I have 247 divided by 12. And from here, I'm going to divide like normal, being careful to keep all of my numbers lined up. So 24 divided by 12 is 2. The 2 needs to go over the 4 because I divided 24 by 12. 2 times 12 is 24, and 24 minus 24 is 0. Even in my subtraction steps, I'm going to be careful and keep my numbers lined up. From here, I need to bring down the 7. Because I brought a number down, I have to repeat my steps 7 divided by 12. 7 divided by 12 is 0. I do need to place the 0 in the quotient. I brought a number down, I have to divide. 0 times 12 is 0. 7 minus 0 is 7. From here, you're not going to put remainder 7 because you're working with decimals, so you need to add a decimal point. We're going to immediately bring it straight up and place it in our quotient so it's in the correct place, and we're going to add a 0 that we can bring down. Now I have 70 divided by 12. 70 divided by 12 is 5. 5 times 12 is 60. When I subtract 70 minus 60, I get 10. We're going to add another 0. We're going to bring that 0 straight down. Now we have 100 divided by 12, which is 8. 8 times 12 is 96. And when I regroup and subtract, I get 10 minus 6, which is 4, and 9 minus 9, which is 0. We're going to add one more 0 that we can bring down 
because I've always had my students round to the hundreds place. And in order to do that, you need one more digit in your quotient. So we're going to add another zero that we can bring down. We get 40 divided by 12. 40 divided by 12 is 3. 3 times 12 is 36. I'm going to regroup so I can subtract. 10 minus 6 is 4. And from here, I'm going to round my quotient to the nearest hundredth. I have a 3 behind the 8, which means I'm going to leave my number the same. I'm not going to be rounding up. So my quotient is going to be 20 and 58 hundredths. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.